Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a review of my Gen 3 Glock 19. Uh, now I know this is probably the most commonly reviewed handgun. It's also the most uh, commonly referenced handgun when talking about other guns. But I think there's some really good reasons for that. And I want to kind of discuss some of those reasons. Uh, why this is my typical everyday carry gun. Some of the mods that I've done to it. The mods I'd like to do to it in the future. And uh, tell you guys what I think of it overall. So... Without any further ado, let's just jump right into the table. Alright guys, so before we get started, uh, just to let you know there's a bunch of guns on the table I'll be showing you throughout the video. They've all been cleared and safety checked, so I'm not going to waste time doing that on camera. Now, this is the Glock 19 Gen 3, if I didn't already say that in the opening of the video. Uh, chambered in 9mm, and for those of you who aren't super familiar with Glock's model designations, uh, this is the mid-size version, so they have the subcompact, the compact, and the full size, and the only difference is the length of the uh, grip on the frame and the length of the slide in the barrel. Uh, they also have their competition target models with the extra long barrel and the full size frame, but I'm not going to get into any of those today. Uh, for some tech specs, I'm just going to read some stuff off of Glock's website for you guys. Uh, has a 4.02 inch long barrel, weighs 21 ounces without the magazine or 23 ounces with an empty magazine overall length is 7.3 inches it has a 1.25 ish inch width and it has a height including the magazine of 5.04 inches the magazine does stick out just a little bit underneath uh, with the base plate just that's a flush fit magazine the standard 15 round mag um, so now that we've got some of the tech specs out of the way, what is this gun really for? Well, I see this gun as kind of fitting a lot of different niches. Uh, this would be a great concealed carry gun. This is my everyday carry gun most days. I mean, sometimes I do carry other things, but this is kind of my go-to, if you will. It's kind of that perfect size, at least for me. It conceals well uh, when I carry appendix or if I carry outside the waistband under an untucked shirt or something. Uh, it works great in both of those roles. It's also a really good uh, home defense gun. I mean, you can see I've got this TLR-1 HL mounted to it. I do carry it with this light as well. Uh, I prefer to have a light on my duty self-defense type handguns, especially for a home defense gun. So the fact that you can put a light on this and identify a target in the dark, to me, puts this in the category for sure of home defense gun. Not to mention that you can put a longer magazine in this, you know, 17 round, 19 round, 33 round magazine, stick it on your nightstand and you got plenty of firepower there, hopefully to deal with whatever may go bump in the night at your house. Um, this would be a pretty good truck gun. I mean, they're not super expensive. They're not as cheap as something like a high point. Uh, I think I paid around $500 for this gun, but, uh, and I got it several years ago, but you know, it, it's a good gun. It's going to work reliably for you. It's not going to need a whole lot of maintenance, uh, especially if you're not using it very often. It's just getting linty and dirty and dusty. This one's got some lint on it from me carrying it yesterday. Um, it would be a great truck gun. Uh, backpacking gun. It's not super heavy, so you could carry that if you're out, you know, walking in the woods or something. You don't want to carry a lot of gun weight because you're going to be carrying water and, you know, whatever else you might be carrying, depending on what you're doing. Um, a lot of roles this gun can fit in. I'm not going to try to go through all of them, but I think that's why it's probably Glock's most popular model, just because it is so versatile. I mean, you could carry this thing as a cop on duty, uh, and it would serve you just as well as a concealed carrier. Uh, it's, it's not too small for that. It's not too big for concealed carry. Again, for me, uh, some people with smaller body types or who wear skinny jeans, this may not work for you, so understand that going into it good thing about it is if this gun interests you it's so popular you can go to almost any gun store and pick one up and look at it and feel it and see what you think about it um, you're not going to have to just kind of buy it online on a whim and then hope it works out for you so uh, semi-automatic handgun pretty obvious uh, for those of you who are gun guys but there may be some new guys watching this video too um, it's got it comes from the factory, this is one of the dings I'll give the gun, with these plastic sights. It's just a white box in the back and dot, I call them 
uh, box dot sights. They're made out of plastic. They're crappy. They'll work. I mean, you can hit stuff with them, but these sights are atrocious. And I've heard people jokingly call them dovetail protectors because that's really all they're good for. I haven't changed the ones out on my Glock 26 yet because I don't carry this gun as often. So that's uh, not a, a huge concern for me at this point. But I do want to change these in the future. I upgraded the sights to these Trijicon Suppressor Height 3 dot night sights. This is my preferred style of night sight. It has the white outline around all three dots. It has the tritium vials that glow in the dark. And the rear vials are yellow, whereas the front vial is green. So that's a different color for the front sight. To me, that just helps my eyes line it up in the dark and make it make more sense so that my sights are lined up versus being equidistant from each other but i'm pointed way off over to one side and my brain just connects the dots and thinks that's okay uh, just the way i think about it the, your mileage may vary again now i have suppressor height sights on it and no threaded barrel uh, and that's because i do want to have this slide milled to add a red dot on the top and i just haven't gotten around to doing that between time money i don't want to really be without my gun for that long at this point uh, to send it off so I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, but I figured if I'm going to spend the money on the night sights and upgrade them, I might as well get what I want from the beginning instead of getting standard height sights and then later on having to spend more money on suppressor height sights for the gun. Um, I've also done my own personal uh, pretty terrible looking uh, stipple job on this gun, but as I've said in my previous videos, if you watch my stippling video or my PX4 Storm video, it may not be pretty, but I swear to God, wet, sweaty, muddy, bloody, this gun is not going anywhere. It is locked in my hand when I get a good grip on it. Uh, and that's all I really care about. I mean, Glocks are not particularly good looking guns in my opinion anyway. So I don't think I made it any uglier with this stipple job. Plus the factory uh, texture, if you want to call that from Glock is pretty crappy as well. Um, even people who don't like aggressive stippling tend to do something to their guns, to uh, to these guns at least, to give them some more traction. Uh, what else have I done to this gun? I changed out the back plate just because I wanted something custom. That's not at all necessary, but yeah, I like to customize my guns. I added the extended mag release. Again, this is a Gen 3, so it's just got the little nub sticking out versus the wider, here's my Glock 43 is an example, the wider mag release here. Um, that release, in my opinion, is totally fine just as it is. But the Gen 3s, that button just doesn't stick out far enough for me, so I went ahead and replaced it. Um, I have an Agency Arms uh, hand fit trigger in this one. I actually went to go visit those guys on the way to a training course. And while I was there, they told me that they would just install a trigger in my gun and hand fit it while I waited if I wanted. So shout out to those guys they're really freaking awesome they're totally down to earth if you go see them and hang out with them in person it's just like hanging out with the other gun buddies um uh, but yeah while i hung out in the front with them one of their uh their workers took the gun in the back and put a trigger in and hand fit it for me while i waited it was freaking awesome uh and it's a great trigger too i don't have a trigger scale but out of box it's it's way smoother it's not as not quite as stagey uh, and not definitely not as heavy as a stock block trigger. I'll show you guys the reset on this too. So here's full pull. There's the wall. Very little over travel. And then reset right there. So nice short reset too. Not a lot of take up either. I mean, there's a little bit, but I think it's a great trigger. I think it's way better than any stock Glock trigger. But if you buy this out of box, that's not what you're going to get. You're going to get this trigger. Made out of plastic. It's got the serrations on the front. Uh, it's got that curve to it. And it is a longer length of pull to get to that trigger, to that trigger safety to dis, uh, disengage it, than it would be for this flat trigger. That's one thing I really like about this trigger. Not only is it metal, but it's flat faced. And for me, that just gives a shorter length of pull and a more even consistent trigger, at least to my finger. Uh, added the light. I'll show you some other things I've done to this gun once we take it apart, which I guess we'll go ahead and do that now. 
To take a Glock apart, it's one of the simplest handguns in the world to take apart. You just make sure it's unloaded, point in a safe direction, dry fire it. Now, a lot of people get wrapped around the axle about that. They don't want to dry fire their pistols to take it apart. Me personally, it doesn't bother me. I do a lot of dry fire training at home anyway, so dry firing my gun, in my opinion, that's a training thing. That's something you should be wanting to do on your own. So in order to do it to maintenance the gun, that, that doesn't phase me a bit. But anyway, off that soapbox, once you've dry fired it, I like to move my firing grip into more of this position where I'm gripping over the top of the slide, but still holding behind where my thumb would normally go and just kind of clench my fist a little bit. You see that brings the pistol slightly out of battery. That's all you need. There's these two little levers right here above the trigger guard. Just pull down. There's one on each side. You can see that one there. Just pull down on them and then let the slide go forward. Comes off nice and simple. From there, take your recoil spring out. This little buffer I'll talk about in a second that doesn't come with the gun out of the box. Lift your barrel out of the gun, and boom, you're done. Uh, the machining on this is very well done. You can see there the nice polished uh, firing pin safety that they polished up for me at agency when they hand fitted the trigger. Uh, You've got your striker here that actually uh, gets pulled back and then released when you pull the trigger to come out the breech face, which I'll show you guys, and detonate the primer of the round. Other than that, pretty standard slide. Browning tilting barrel action, so it is a locked breech. Uh, fairly standard looking, but I mean everything about Glocks is standard, right? Like Glock is the standard, so I'm going to be saying standard a lot in this video. Feed ramps, not polished at all, not even a little bit, but I, the only feeding issues I've ever had with any of my Glocks have been using the California 10 round magazines. Now the ones that came with my Glock 26, which is a standard 10 round out of the box, no matter where you buy it, um, they work just fine. But the 10 rounders I got with my Glock 19 and my Glock 17, would cause me feeding issues. So I am so happy that I was able to ditch those mags. Um, that I've never had feeding issues with real Glock mags. So the feed ramp being polished or not polished doesn't bother me. Um, this gun does have polygonal or polygonal, polygonal, however you want to say it, rifling. And they say you shouldn't shoot uh, cast bullets down this barrel. Never done it myself. Um, I know there are people on YouTube that have done it. Hickok has done it, uh, a few others, but eh, I don't know. Do it or don't, it's up to you. Not going to bother me either way, but it might void your warranty if that's something that you're concerned about. But if you have to use your Glock warranty, either you just got the one lemon off that lot number or uh, you did something bad to the gun. Other than that, um, you got metal feed, uh, feed ramps, listen to me, metal slide rails up front and in the rear. The rear ones are molded into the polymer. Um, standard striker style trigger. You've got your little piece back here that grabs onto that striker and pulls it rearward. You've got your bar here that actually disengages that uh, firing pin safety or striker safety in the slide, which is why it has a little ramped up portion there on the top and then I added the light because I like adding lights on my guns. I did replace my factory plastic guide rod with this steel one. I can't remember if I got this one from Brass Stacker or if this one came from Lone Wolf. I think this is the one I got from Lone Wolf and I think the no this is the one from I can't remember. It's one of the two. I have one uh, in my 19 and one in my 17. One of them came from Lone Wolf. One of them came from Brass Stacker. Uh, but I like it. It adds a little bit of weight to the front of the gun, which helps just a little bit with taming that recoil. Not much, but every little bit counts. And if you've watched any of my other pistol reviews, you know I hate polymer guide rods. I hate them with a fiery passion. That's my own personal weirdness, but it sucks. Um, so... I was really happy to be able to find a steel option, and I did that with my 17, my 19, and my 26 because I hate polymer guide rods, and they all come with polymer guide rods. Um, this little buffer here, this is a recoil buffer. So what this does is it sits in your slide, 
right here. And as the slide is moving re rearward on the frame of the gun, and it gets to about that point in the travel, it actually hits this little area of your frame right back in here. And that transmits more energy into your grip and your hand and down your arm. And it's gonna cause a little bit more felt recoil. Now, we all know nine millimeter doesn't recoil that much. I mean, it's not a hand cannon. But as I've said previously, faster follow-up shots are what I'm going for here. Um, a handgun is only a weapon to fight to a rifle or a shotgun with. In my opinion, it is not a adequate standalone defensive option. Sometimes it may be all you have, but I guarantee if you're in a fight with a handgun, a gunfight with a handgun, you're gonna want a rifle or a shotgun in 99% of the cases. Uh, so I want those fast follow-up shots to put as many uh, shots on target as I can make happen in a safe and legal way. And that little bit of recoil mitigation that comes from the buffer, especially combined with the heavier recoil um, guide rod, to me that makes a difference and it makes me at the very least feel better about the gun. So to reassemble, just take your barrel, drop it back in with the locking lugs facing upwards, and of course with your slide inverted. Take your recoil spring, put the round end forward, push it in a little bit, and set it on. Slide it onto your rails here, all the way back, and your gun's back together. Voila, magic. All right, so let's do some size comparisons and competitive options. Uh, Glock 19, obviously a very popular gun. And if you've heard of the Glock 19, you've probably heard of the CZ P10C. When this thing came out, it was constantly compared to this gun. I mean, so much so that people actually figured out you could use Glock 19 holsters for the P10C. I actually have a uh, Blade Tech uh, clipped holster for a Glock 19 that this fits in. Now, it's a tight fit. All my Glock holsters uh, will accept this gun, but it's a tight fit. So uh, there's a bit more friction on the way in and on the way out. I don't prefer to carry that way, but uh, it's what I've got for right now and it works and I only have the two magazines this gun came with so far, so I don't carry it very often. Uh, but it's about the same size. It's about the same height when you put the magazines in. It's about the same length. It's a little bit heavier. I mean, this gun in every way was going after Glock, not to mention it had a better trigger out of box. I think the trigger on this thing is at least as good as my Agency Arms custom gunsmith trigger, if not slightly better. And that's not a ding against Agency. I mean, those guys do great work. This trigger is thousands of times, in my opinion, better than a stock Glock trigger. It's not as heavy. It's got a better break. It's got a better pull. It's got a better reset. Everything about this trigger is better, but they're still working on a Glock. So you can only take something so far before the limitations of the design start messing with you. CZ is known for great triggers and this thing is no exception. This is probably the best striker fired trigger of any gun that I have. I've got a separate review on this gun by the way so if you guys are interested go check that video out. I'll link it down below. Uh, but enough about this gun. You guys can kind of see for size how they stack up. Now let's move on to a gun that more people will probably be familiar with. And that's the Beretta 92M9 series. Now this is a 92A1, which just means it has a rail uh, and dovetailed sights and a couple other minor differences, but essentially it's an M9. Lots and lots of people know the M9. Now the M9, I'm gonna actually raise the camera a little bit for you guys so you can get a better view. Sorry about the shakiness for a second. There we go. The M9 is a bigger gun. It's way heavier, it's way bigger, it's gonna be longer than the 19 in both the slide and the frame. It's gonna be thicker when you add in all the controls. And like I said, it's a way heavier gun. But I figured this would be a decent size comparison for guys who know the M9 and are familiar with it. Maybe not be, may not be as familiar with the Glock. As I showed you guys earlier, I brought my Glock 26 out as well. So you can see how Glock kind of does their sizes. They have the full size, which is bigger than this, 
the subcom or the compact and the subcompact, and they just chop a little bit in these two dimensions as they go um, down in size. Other than that, these are essentially the exact same gun. There's no rail on this one. Other than that, same gun. Here's one you guys may not have seen coming. This is my Beretta PX4 Storm Compact. Now, all of these guns are chambered in 9mm, by the way. I should have led with that. Uh, so, working with the same caliber, just different guns, different platforms. This gun, if we exclude the light, is just a hair shorter than the Glock 19 from uh, back to front. And once you put the magazines in, they would be about the same height from bottom to top. It is a little bit heavier, and it's a double action handgun, so it does have a hammer. Uh, a lot of guys like that, some guys don't. That's personal preference, but this would be a pretty good competitive option for somebody who is looking for a hammer-fired gun to compete with the Glock. Still got a polymer frame. It's got a rail, so you could put a light on it, although that's a short piece of rail, so you may have to find a specific light that would work on that small piece of rail. Uh, it still takes magazines from its bigger brother, so you can put 17 and 20 round mags in it to have a, a higher option, or you could carry those magazines and just keep the 15 in it when you're carrying it. Um, so you do have some options. Aftermarket options on this, like different triggers, different sights, different things are not going to be as wide as the Glock, although there are uh, a few options for all of those things with this gun, not just from Beretta either. If you guys are interested in seeing a review on this gun, post that down in the comments and let me know. Then the other two guns I brought out for eye candy mostly, let's be honest, to show you guys are... The SIG P365, which I already have an initial review on. This thing is tiny. 10 rounds in the mag versus the 15 of the Glock. Or the CZ. Or the PX4 Compact. But, holy crap, is this thing tiny. Now, I have an initial review on this gun, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. But, uh, just so you guys can see the size comparison, you only get 5 more rounds in the Glock. And this thing is so much tinier. Now, only five rounds. That's not anything to sneeze at, for sure. But it's going to depend on what you guys are looking for. Do you want something smaller and easier to conceal? Or do you want something with more firepower? Uh, you make that decision. And then the Glock 43. Another very popular gun by Glock. Uh, single stack, six rounds in the standard magazine versus 15. Much smaller, much shorter in both dimensions, much thinner, but a lot of people know the 43, so I figured I would use it as a size comparison tool as well. Now, overall, what do I think of this gun? I think it's great for what it is. It's an inexpensive, reliable option that just works. Uh, the very first day I shot my gun, my Glock 19, I had just bought it. It was actually the first gun I bought in California. I always swore I would never buy a gun in California, and I always swore that I would never buy a Glock because if, if I wanted a plastic gun, I could go to Walmart and get that, right? Well, you guys can kind of see how my mindset has changed on that. Uh, the whole no polymer thing, right? But anyway... I took this thing out to the range and it was pouring rain. It never rained in California, at least where I was, but it was pouring rain that day. I was soaked in like five minutes. I just took the pistol, threw it in a puddle on the shooting table, took the ammo in the boxes, threw it in a puddle on the shooting table, and just put 200 rounds through it straight out of the box. I didn't clean it. I didn't lube it. I didn't do anything except make sure there were no bore obstructions. And the gun ran flawlessly. Every time I emptied it, I put it back in a puddle. I kept the ammo in a puddle. I kept the mags in puddles. And it just worked. Now, is that the most arduous test in the world? No, not at all. But I think it's a fairly realistic test. Uh, ever since then, I've carried this gun fairly regularly. I've shot it at the range. I've shot it in training. I've shot it, you know, in, in comp uh, not like super competition, but some mild competition with friends and stuff. And... It's never failed me except for with those Glock uh, factory California compliant 10 round mags. And I don't know. I trust it with my life at this point. I've got a few thousand rounds through it, if not more. And I think it's great. Now, there are a lot of things I'd still like to do to this gun for sure. 
I'd like to have the slide milled, like I said. I'd like to get a threaded barrel for it. I want a different light. I want to put the TLR7 on there just because it would kind of fit the size of the gun a bit better. Uh, but overall, I think it's, it's not bad out of box. If you're looking for a relatively budget option gun, you're not going to spend a crap ton of money on, and you don't need to spend a crap ton of money on it out of the box. You just want it to work and do what you need it to do. This would be a great option for you. And especially if you're a little bit limited in cash, but you can save and buy this versus going to buy something like a high point. Um, and, but you're not going to spend a lot of extra money on you know, lights and different parts and accessories and things like that. You just want a gun that's going to work to keep on your nightstand or to carry with you. Great option. Uh, I don't have anything too bad to say about it. Uh, I will say there are some parts for this I would not recommend. One of them, at least for me personally, is the factory Glock extended slide release. Now, the reason for that is I actually put one on this gun and I was running it uh, in a class one day and I noticed that my slide was locking open way before I expected it to. And the first time I thought, oh, well, I just, uh, I just didn't have as much ammo in that mag as I thought I did. And then it happened again later on and I looked and realized oh wait no there's there's still rounds in that mag what the hell's going on well I figured out that it was because of my support hand going alongside the gun and actually under recoil hitting the extended part of that slide release and locking the slide open so even if I changed my grip around a little bit it would still do it uh, I couldn't train around that particular part so I just ditched it and went back to this but one of the nice things about factory Glock parts is they're not expensive. I think the mag release, the extended mag release cost me like three or four bucks. The uh, extended slide release, I want to say was under 10. It's been a while since I bought one and I haven't priced any because I don't like them. Uh, but if you do buy something like that, at least the factory stuff, and you realize that you don't like it, it's not going to work for you, you're not going to be out a boatload of money. So there's that. Uh, I don't think I have too much else to say about the gun, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please go check out some of my other videos. Subscribe to the channel. Support the work. I really appreciate it. If there's something you guys have a question about or something I didn't cover in the video, I'm sure I didn't cover something. There's so much to talk about with Glocks, and I don't want to go on for 20 years because there are 20 years worth of videos on this gun on YouTube. Uh, but if there's something you want to know about, if you have a question, post that down in the comments below. If you'd like to know more about how I undercut the trigger guard or why I did something to the gun or my experiences with it, whatever the case may be, let me know. Uh, hit the like video, share or hit the like button on the video, share it with your friends. And thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you watching. So y'all take care, roll tide, and I'll see you next time.